Hyponatremia is a common electrolyte disorder characterized by a serum sodium level below 135 millimole per liter. This condition represents an imbalance where there is an excess of water relative to sodium in the body. The underlying mechanism often involves elevated levels of antidiuretic hormone, which plays a crucial role in water retention. While mild hyponatremia may not produce noticeable symptoms, it's important to note that significant clinical manifestations typically emerge when sodium levels drop below 125 millimole per liter. As healthcare professionals, recognizing and managing hyponatremia appropriately is essential to prevent potential complications and ensure optimal patient outcomes. Pathophysiology the pathophysiology of hyponatremia involves a complex interplay of factors that disrupt the delicate balance of sodium and water in the body. Sodium, as the primary extracellular cation, plays a vital role in maintaining osmotic pressure and regulating fluid distribution between intracellular and extracellular compartments. The kidneys are the primary regulators of this balance operating under the influence of hormones such as ADH and aldosterone to fine-tune sodium and water excretion. Hyponatremia occurs when there is a relative excess of water compared to sodium in the extracellular fluid. This imbalance can arise from various mechanisms, including increased water intake, impaired water excretion, or excessive sodium loss. The body's normal response to changes in osmolality involves the release of ADH, which promotes water reabsorption in the kidneys. However, in certain pathological states, this mechanism can be disrupted, leading to water retention and subsequent dilution of serum sodium concentration. Causes of hyponatremia Hyponatremia can result from a variety of underlying conditions and factors. Excessive water intake, often seen in psychiatric patients with polydipsia or in endurance athletes overhydrating during events, can overwhelm the kidney's ability to excrete free water, leading to dilutional hyponatremia. Conversely, conditions that impair water excretion, such as congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, or renal failure, can cause water retention and subsequent hyponatremia. These conditions are often associated with elevated ADH levels, exacerbating the problem. Sodium loss can also contribute to hyponatremia. This can occur through various routes, including renal losses, often due to diuretic use, gastrointestinal losses from prolonged vomiting or diarrhea, or excessive sweating. Hormonal imbalances, particularly the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone secretion, SIADH, can lead to increased water retention by the kidneys, resulting in dilutional hyponatremia. SIADH can be triggered by various factors, including certain medications, malignancies, and central nervous system disorders. Additionally, some medications, such as thiazide diuretics, can directly interfere with the kidney's ability to concentrate urine, potentially leading to hyponatremia. Clinical presentation. The clinical manifestations of hyponatremia can vary significantly depending on the severity and rate of sodium decline. In cases of mild hyponatremia, where serum sodium levels remain above 125 millimole per liter, patients often present with nonspecific symptoms. These may include fatigue, weakness, muscle cramps, mild confusion, and postural dizziness. These symptoms are often subtle and can be easily overlooked or attributed to other conditions. As hyponatremia becomes more severe, with sodium levels dropping below 120 millimole per liter, the risk of central nervous system complications increases dramatically. This is due to the development of cerebral edema as water moves into brain cells in response to the hypoosmolar extracellular environment. Severe hyponatremia can manifest with pronounced CNS symptoms, including confusion, agitation, delirium, lethargy, somnolence, seizures, and in extreme cases, coma and central herniation. It's crucial to note that the rate of sodium decline plays a significant role in symptom severity. Rapid drops in serum sodium are more likely to cause severe CNS manifestations, 
even at moderately low levels, as the brain has less time to adapt to changes in osmotic pressure. In contrast, chronic hyponatremia, where sodium levels decline gradually over days or weeks, may be asymptomatic or present with milder symptoms, as the brain has time to implement compensatory mechanisms. Diagnosis Diagnosing hyponatremia requires a comprehensive approach that combines clinical assessment with laboratory investigations. A thorough history is essential, focusing on medication use, especially diuretics. Underlying medical conditions such as congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, or renal disease, and recent events that might affect fluid balance, such as gastrointestinal losses or excessive fluid intake. The physical examination should pay particular attention to assessing the patient's volume status, as this can provide crucial clues about the underlying etiology. Laboratory investigations form the cornerstone of hyponatremia diagnosis. Serum sodium measurement confirms the diagnosis with values below 135 millimole per liter indicating hyponatremia. Serum osmolality is a key test that helps differentiate between hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic hyponatremia. Urine sodium and osmolality provide valuable information about the kidney's handling of sodium and water, which is crucial in determining the cause of hyponatremia. A stepwise approach to diagnosis typically involves first determining serum osmolality, then assessing the patient's volume status, and finally evaluating urine sodium, urine osmolality, and fractional excretion of sodium. This systematic approach helps narrow down the differential diagnosis and guides appropriate management strategies. When investigating a patient with hyponatremia, the first step is to measure serum osmolality. This helps rule out pseudohyponatremia, which can occur due to conditions like hyperlipidemia or hyperproteinemia. Serum glucose levels should also be assessed, as hyponatremia can result from hyperglycemia. Specifically, serum sodium decreases by approximately 1.4 millimole for every 100 milligrams per deciliter increase in glucose, due to the movement of water out of cells triggered by the elevated glucose levels. Testing urine electrolytes and osmolality is also crucial in the initial evaluation. Urine sodium concentration can aid in determining the cause of hyponatremia. Levels below 20 milliequivalent per liter, suggesting extrarenal salt losses, and levels above 40 milliequivalent per liter, indicating renal salt wasting. Increased blood urea nitrogen and creatinine levels may point to a renal cause for the hyponatremia. Urine osmolality can provide further diagnostic clues. A urine osmolality of less than 100 milliasmol per kilogram suggests either excessive water intake, polydipsia, or in rare cases, insufficient solute intake. On the other hand, a urine osmolality greater than 400 milliasmol per kilogram indicates that an excess of antidiuretic hormone may be a significant contributing factor. Intermediate values often point to a multifactorial cause, such as antidiuretic hormone excess combined with polydipsia. Finally, it is essential to assess thyroid, adrenal, and pituitary function if clinically indicated, as disorders of these organs can also contribute to hyponatremia. Management the management of hyponatremia requires a nuanced approach that takes into account the severity of symptoms, the patient's volume status, and the underlying cause. For asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic patients with chronic hyponatremia, fluid restriction alone may be sufficient. However, severe hyponatremia with significant CNS symptoms necessitates more aggressive treatment. In hypovolemic hyponatremia, the priority is fluid resuscitation with isotonic saline to restore circulating volume. Conversely, hypervolemic hyponatremia often requires fluid restriction and management of the underlying condition, such as heart failure or cirrhosis. Euvolemic hyponatremia, often caused by SIDH, typically requires treatment of the underlying cause and may benefit from fluid restriction or pharmacological interventions. In cases of SIDH, in addition to free water restriction, medications that inhibit ADH action, 
such as demeclocycline or vaptans, may be considered. However, these medications should be used judiciously due to their potential to cause rapid sodium correction and associated complications. For severe, symptomatic hyponatremia, hypertonic saline is the treatment of choice. The goal is to raise serum sodium levels slowly and cautiously, typically aiming for an increase of 4 to 6 millimole per liter in the first 24 hours. This careful approach is crucial to avoid osmotic demyelination syndrome, a potentially devastating neurological complication that can occur with overly rapid correction of chronic hyponatremia. Prognosis the prognosis of hyponatremia is intrinsically linked to its underlying cause, severity, and the approach to its correction. Mild chronic hyponatremia, when appropriately managed, generally carries a favorable prognosis. However, severe acute hyponatremia can lead to significant complications. Hyponatremia, if corrected too rapidly, may lead to morbidity and mortality due to cerebral edema, seizures, and osmotic demyelination syndrome. Close monitoring of serum sodium levels during treatment is paramount, allowing for timely adjustments in therapy to avoid complications. The rate of sodium correction is as crucial as the correction itself, with overly rapid correction potentially leading to worse outcomes than the hyponatremia itself. For patients with chronic hyponatremia, especially those with persistent underlying causes, Long-term monitoring and management may be necessary to prevent recurrence and maintain optimal sodium levels. This may involve ongoing fluid restriction, medication adjustments, or regular follow-up to address any underlying conditions contributing to the electrolyte imbalance. Question number one. What is the serum sodium level below which hyponatremia is defined? The correct answer is C. Hyponatremia is defined as a serum sodium level below 135 millimoles per liter. Question number two. Which of the following is the most important treatment for mildly symptomatic uvolemic hyponatremia caused by SIDH? The correct answer is C. The most important treatment for mildly symptomatic uvolemic hyponatremia caused by SIADH is fluid restriction. Question number three. What is a potential complication of overly rapid correction of chronic hyponatremia? The correct answer is B. A potential complication of overly rapid correction of chronic hyponatremia is osmotic demyelination syndrome, previously called central pontine demyelinosis. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.